day and uh, i remember saying hello good morning good morning divya Pema. good morning ma'am good morning brother brother avdesh yeah welcome uh so we'll pray and we will uh, get started and i remember mentioning yesterday uh if you know you have any questions or comments we will begin with that from based on what we discussed yesterday right the pattern of prayer so you could uh, share that and then we will get into today's subject about praying in the spirit okay so uh, we'll start with a word of prayer and i would like to ask somebody to please lead us okay yeah so who would like to lead in prayer okay yes joash please go ahead thank you father lord we thank you for this session lord we just we Pray, O Lord Jesus, that we will be able to apply everything that we learn, and Lord Jesus, we will, Lord Jesus, learn, Lord Jesus, better, O Lord Jesus, whatever we're going to learn, O Lord Jesus, will help us apply everything, understand everything, O Lord, keep our uh, minds alert, and Lord Jesus, help us to remember everything, O Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so much, Joash. Uh, that's nice so today we uh, are at chapter 8 in the first few chapters we talked about the basics of prayer and as we are moving forward what we are learning is how we can apply this to our own prayer life and develop our prayer life so all these subjects like pattern of prayer uh now we are talking about praying in the spirit you know and later on you know we we will see a few more topics they all have to do with developing our own personal prayer life so you can apply this here okay? and you can practice these things uh and i'm sure that you will see growth in your prayer life so today the subject for our discussion is prayer in the spirit now to understand uh, what prayer in the spirit means you know we would simply say that it is praying in tongues now you can ask the question how is praying in the spirit praying in tongues uh, sometimes people interpret it as praying with a strong desire or praying earnestly right you're praying from your spirit in a deep way so wouldn't that mean praying in the spirit you know if we look at passages like uh, 1st corinthians 14 uh, verses 14 and 15 there um, paul writes i pray in a tongue when i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful and then verse 15 he says what is the conclusion then i will pray in the spirit which is earlier already mentioned when i pray in a tongue who is praying the spirit is praying so now in verse 15 he is saying i will pray with the spirit which means he is praying in tongues and he makes a distinction and he says and i will also pray with my understanding so two different things pray in the spirit and pray with my understanding so if there are two different things then praying in the spirit does not mean just making strong prayers right in our own languages they are separate things he goes on further and he says i will sing with my spirit and i will also sing with my understanding so separate things i will sing with my spirit meaning i will sing in tongues and i will also sing with my understanding so from this passage itself it's clear that you know he is referring to praying in tongues as something separate from the usual prayers now what does praying in the spirit actually mean excuse me it means praying um with the spirit or praying in partnership with the holy spirit okay uh what is partnership being 
guided by or us yielding to the holy spirit now is this the only thing we do with the uh, leading of the holy spirit no we are invited to walk in the spirit we are invited to be led by the spirit right so uh, we our entire lifetime we are supposed to be guided by the holy spirit but especially when it comes to prayer we are encouraged to pray by the holy spirit with the holy spirit or pray in the spirit and that simply means so whenever you say pray in the spirit now we understood what paul mentioned okay and paul meant very clearly that when he prays in the spirit he is referring to praying in tongues okay so praying in the spirit means praying in tongues yeah so what is the advantage of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues we will look at uh, you know several benefits in our notes here uh, but i also suggest that you go and look up uh, an apc publication and you can find this in our uh, i'll just put the link here acw.org/books okay so if you go to this uh, url there are lots of publications available for us over there but you can pick the publication which is called wonderful benefits of praying in tongues yes so this is the publication which you can download and you can read it because the uh, benefits are enlisted in more detail here we are briefly going over the benefits so those of us who are interested you can actually do a study on tongues what does it mean what are what are the types of tongues you know so on and so forth and it will be helpful for you now coming to the uh, uh the in tongues and what it means how it is useful for us we will look at different aspects so the first advantage of praying without boundaries now it will be good if somebody can read first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 first corinthians 14 and verse 2 please anybody can turn to that and read it for one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands but in his spirit he speaks mysteries okay okay thank you john thank you for reading that so we are told here two things we can pick up one is when we speak in tongues we can't understand it okay and that is why paul said i will pray in the spirit i will also pray with my understanding so praying with understanding is our natural languages okay when we pray in tongues we don't understand it but here in this verse we are also told that we pray mysteries or unknown things unknown to who is it unknown to god no not at all because god knows all things you know when we describe who god is we generally use omniscient omnipotent right terms like that that describe that god is 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 somebody who uh, is present everywhere he knows everything right omniscient refers to his knowledge he knows everything so mysteries for us but god already knows those things so when i am praying in tongues i am praying things beyond my mind i am praying things beyond my understanding okay so what do these mysteries include these mysteries can include anything okay they can include anything that the holy spirit would want us to pray through now if we you know look at um, mm, uh you know other passages we are told that god can also give us the revelation 
of what we are praying for okay so maybe uh, after some time after praying through for some time in tongues you stop and you say holy spirit you know i want a revelation of what i prayed for god can put it back in our spirit and say oh okay you know this is what i you were actually praying for so we are praying for things that we don't understand we could be praying for things beyond us and that is why one benefit of praying in tongues is that we are praying without boundaries okay we are praying without boundaries so when i'm praying in tongues i don't know but i could be praying for my future now maybe i am in school but i'm praying in tongues for all you know god might be the holy spirit might be leading me to pray for 20 years down the line when i'm going to establish a company okay so beyond boundaries boundary happens because of our mind but when we pray in tongues there's no boundary you know a school student praying in tongues who knows the individual might be praying for the marriage which will happen whatever two decades from now so there's no limit in what we can pray for when we pray in tongues now there are so many testimonies i'm sure even you would have heard uh, you know testimonies in uh, from others or you have your own testimonies where there, there was a time when you were praying in tongues and you yourself did not know who you're praying for but you got an answer right you got an answer that uh, those those prayers were for a certain family member they were going through a, a difficult time at that point and somehow the holy spirit was causing you to pray now without knowing how can you pray for a certain person it's not possible in the natural but when we pray in tongues it is possible the holy spirit can cause us to pray beyond boundaries that we have set i've also heard of testimonies where uh, you know uh, apparently uh, uh, like a minister of god he shares um, he's he's uh, you know gone to be with the lord but he was a wonderful prophetic voice and he shared how uh, one day when he had gone to minister in a certain town uh, uh, strangely you know one of the days of the meeting in the night he got a severe stomach pain and uh, to to the level that he couldn't sleep and he was so distressed because the next day again he had to go and minister in the meeting and he was like what is happening you know i don't know lord uh, uh, you know uh, how is this happening and uh, sudden i mean he describes it in a very detailed and a vivid way okay and i heard this testimony and he says that but uh in some time as he was just praying and battling it out and declaring healing on himself he felt like a warm uh, pour uh, you know like warm oil is being poured on the part that is paining and then the pain just left him and then he was wondering what is this how how is it possible uh you know how did i how did i recover Uh, in this way holy spirit please show me and then he was praying and asking the holy spirit to give him revelation about how he quickly uh, recovered and then uh, he he shares about how god gave him a vision and in that vision uh, he was taken to a far away uh, he was taken to a far away land something like south america or something in a village and a woman who is completely wrinkled like an old woman she was praying in tongues okay and little did she know that she was actually praying for this minister of god for that uh, stomach pain to leave okay and it was as if the holy spirit told him you know who prayed for you this woman in a remote village she's praying in tongues she doesn't know what she's praying for but she was the one who was praying for you and that oil that you know was poured out on you was that uh, that healing which was released upon you because of the prayer of this lady right so it's amazing isn't it uh, so when i heard that testimony i was like wow that's how god works we could be praying for anyone but you know we are praying as the holy spirit leads us beyond for ourselves also we are in different uh, um, you know time in our lives but we could be praying about something way ahead in our future our ministry or uh, you know the the things that projects that we are going to undertake or our, one of our family members you know sometimes you just feel strongly i must pray i must pray and you're praying and the next thing you come to know somebody escaped an accident so so many things happen that you don't even know what you are praying for and that is the benefit 
of praying in tongues that we are praying the mysteries of god and our prayer life becomes limitless when we pray in the spirit okay and that is an advantage that is a benefit now the second reason why we should pray in the spirit is that we pray the perfect will of god so another passage which we can read is romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 could somebody please read that romans 8 26 27 yeah likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god amen thank you thank you rosalind and that's self explanatory i don't have to explain it further the scripture clearly says that the holy spirit knows the mind of god and he makes intercession according to the will of god so every prayer i pray in the spirit okay it is a perfect prayer and that's an advantage because sometimes when we pray with our understanding we don't know okay god do you want me to take this job or do you want me to take the other job we don't know but when i pray in the spirit what is the holy spirit doing holy spirit knows company 2 is the company where god wants to position you right now so when i am praying in the spirit i am praying the perfect will of god okay god open the door in company to um give the favor grant the wisdom give the knowledge in the holy spirit and i don't even know but what am i praying i am praying the perfect will of god that's what god wants for me and the holy spirit knowing the will of god helps me to pray in the perfect will of god some people say oh okay so uh, praying in the spirit is praying the perfect will of god uh you know i'm just starting to pray in tongues i don't know like i've just been baptized in the holy spirit and i can only say you know utter a few syllables here and there every syllable is the perfect will of god okay and that's the beauty of it so we must be encouraged to pray in the spirit okay because when we pray in the spirit we are praying in the perfect will of god things that we don't know but god knows okay and the holy spirit it says he helps us in our weaknesses we don't know what we should pray for but the spirit himself makes intercession through us with groanings that cannot be uttered and of course later on <clears throat> the pray according to the will of god so sometimes when you don't know what to pray you no know, one good thing that you can do yes you can pray a prayer of consecration and say god not my will yours be done but we can also take time to just pray in the spirit okay you don't know what you're praying for but one thing whatever i prayed the last 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes one hour it is perfect it is according to the will that is a benefit uh, that we have when we pray in the spirit we will pray according to the will of god now what are some other uh are you all with me is are you understanding what i'm sharing yes sir yes, oh, okay okay great great okay great then i will okay what are some of the other uh, benefits we just read that the spirit helps us in our weaknesses okay so when we pray in the spirit one of the other things that we can expect is the help of the holy spirit now when do we need help we need help um uh, and it says in our weaknesses so even though we are believers right we know that we are battling uh, uh, satan we are battling the world right the world will um, present with temptations the world will present with so much of evil against us and we also know that there is something called as the flesh which is our own personal weaknesses in our uh, soul and in our body 
so as a believer if i am battling you know any one of these the holy spirit can help me and particularly in my uh, flesh particularly in my uh, uh, you know in my being so as i pray in the spirit as i pray in the spirit uh, i will notice that i am moving into greater victory i am experiencing greater freedom by the work of the spirit now when we read romans chapter 6 you know uh, paul there he writes that i want to do this but i'm not able to do that you know who will save me uh, he he kind of he's battling and he's wondering uh, how to deal with the flesh you know how to deal with the weaknesses of the flesh even though uh, as as a believer he wants to do the right thing there are all these weaknesses so fleshly weaknesses for example if we have uh, uh, you know Uh, i'm just giving a simple example maybe uh, i'm very concerned about laziness and i'm really dealing with laziness procrastination in my life and i'm thinking god how can i overcome this we can take the help of the spirit the spirit helps us in our weaknesses so i can pray in the spirit right so when i'm praying in the spirit the holy spirit will help me overcome the fleshly weaknesses so paul writes about weaknesses and then he moves on to the holy spirit and the work of the spirit in romans chapter 8 so the answer for those weaknesses that we may have in our flesh is the work of the holy spirit so as i am praying in the holy spirit those weaknesses are being dealt with right in my those fleshly weaknesses now even when um, john came uh, preaching about baptism preaching about uh, you know that that the lord jesus would come and all of that he said look there is somebody coming who is greater than me okay and john preached repentance baptism uh, that had to do with repentance but he said this jesus who will come he will baptize you with holy spirit and fire so what is this holy spirit he will baptize you with holy spirit we understand but why is there an association of fire over there because we know that the property of fire is to uh, burn up the chaff you know whenever you light a fire the things that are uh, unwanted that are light you know, they get burnt up immediately in the same way when the work of the holy spirit takes place within me there can be weaknesses of the flesh but it's also working like fire within me right so i am baptized with the holy spirit and that is also a cleansing fire i'm praying in the spirit i'm praying in the spirit what's happening my weaknesses are slowly slowly beginning to disappear right so i can strengthen myself and overcome my weaknesses as i pray in the spirit so that is another added advantage so far we said that we can pray without boundaries we can pray in the will of god we can also overcome the weaknesses of the flesh now praying in the spirit you know it also strengthens our spirit man there are two scriptures which we can look at so one person can please read first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 and another person can read jude uh, there's only one chapter verse 20 so first corinthians 14 4 and jude 1 20 one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself mm. but one who prophesies edifies the church mm. thank you thank you john yes uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, jude 120 but you dear friends by building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the holy spirit mm. yes thank you thank you jafina so you see both these scriptures are talking about an individual being strengthened so you see words like edify in what john read first corinthians 14:4 he says he who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself edify means build up and in what uh, jeffina read she read that you know you build yourself up praying in the holy spirit okay so edify is to build up and it is to strengthen and what is the connection with building up over here and these two verses praying in the holy spirit or praying in tongues so when i am praying in tongues 
what i'm actually doing is i am strengthening myself okay i am spending time every day um, you know just setting time aside and i'm only praying in the spirit i'm praying in tongues i'm praying in tongues how does it help me both of these scriptures are clearly pointing out and they are saying that in my inner man god is doing a work and that work is strengthening me okay <laughs> and i like uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, testimony which one very uh, wonderful minister of god uh, shared now uh, i don't know if some of you i mean i obviously like i'm little careful about <coughs> the teachings of of people but there are some you know primary teachings that uh, we can always go back to and enjoy that and you know if there are errors and mistakes those kind of things we can leave out um so that's why i'm not mentioning names of pastors and uh, uh, ministers but uh, yeah there is one particular minister of god from the word of faith movement uh, which used to be uh uh you know he he taught so much about the uh, work of the spirit okay and he's probably one of those first people who uh, in a very detailed manner he he shared about uh, you know healing and uh, the power of god and things like that uh, and he ministered so often in large gatherings okay uh, but one of the things he says is that he used to spend so much time praying in the spirit so much time praying in the spirit and even after he completed the meetings he would go back home or go back to the place where they would put him up and when he started growing older you know he was quite old at, uh, at some point in the ministry those times he could not even kneel down and pray but he would just lie down on the bed and pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit so he talks about how you know uh, that strength right in the inner man he could experience that strength he could experience it uh, uh, in his in his you know regular normal life but also in the ministry and he would go back the next day and minister and he would really see the power of god so uh, i'm just trying to give you like you know small examples here and there but uh, there is really that that incredible power in praying in the spirit praying in tongues that will build you up uh, as a uh, Uh, as a child of god and especially in our inner man because ephesians 3:16 you know it says that you know, that god god would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man so through his spirit in the inner man and we can practice praying in tongues and even paul he writes he says i pray in tongues much more than all of you so you can imagine he came up with so much of revelation of god's word so obviously paul had engaged in a lot of praying in the spirit and that's something we can do to strengthen our own inner man and that is an advantage okay and praying in the spirit will also keep us walking in the love of god in the scripture that jefina just read you know she also said that you know beloved building yourselves up uh, on your most holy faith praying in the spirit and then the continuation of that says keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life so you know, there's a connection so you build yourself up in the holy spirit by praying in the spirit but also keep yourself in the love of god and uh, how is that possible you see when we pray in the spirit our inner man is strengthened one thing second is that our fleshly weaknesses are consumed right they are dealt with by the work of the spirit and so what can emerge out of us the characteristics of jesus the character of jesus okay so we become more like jesus so jesus is our perfect example of somebody who walked in god's love okay and the god kind of love so how do we walk in that love when we yield ourselves to the work of the spirit right so the characteristic of god will begin to show through our lives and we can walk in the love of god and that is again an advantage of praying in the spirit now another advantage praying in the spirit is rest and refreshing remember uh, this this minister of god that i was talking about um 
we uh, he also shares about how uh, you know apart from physical rest our spirit sometimes you know we are in a turmoil within and our spirit man needs that refreshing our spirit man needs that rest so between meetings and you know between minist ministering so often ministering here there hundreds and thousands of people one of the things that he would do was to just pray in the spirit right so as sleep gives rest to the body praying in the spirit gives rest to the spirit okay and needless to say that it also gives rest to your soul right your soul part of you your emotions your will now uh, your mind you can receive the rest of god when you pray in the spirit so uh, there is a scripture in isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12 uh, can somebody read that please isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12 for with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his to this people to whom he said this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and mm. this is the refreshing yet they would not hear mm mm yeah sure thank you uh, roslyn roslyn can you also read the uh, uh, first corinthians 14 21 in the law it is written with men of an other tongues and other lips i will speak to this people and yet for all that they will not hear me says mm -hmm. the lord okay 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 is that first corinthians yes ma'am 14 okay 14 21 21 okay 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 men of other lips yes. other tongues okay sure sure thank you so you notice here in isaiah 28 it's talking about a rest okay a rest from what lips and another tongue okay through uh, the lips stammering lips and another tongue and similarly you know first corinthians 14 21 also points at another tongue another language so through this god promised and he said that there will be rest with which you may cause the weary to rest okay and this is the refreshing so if we want to experience the refreshing of god we can make use of this privilege that god has given us which is to pray in the spirit okay so some some people also say uh, uh, it's like a spiritual spa okay <laughs> to put it in a uh, a little funny way if you want to because when we pray in the spirit like we don't know the dynamics of what exactly is going on but the weariness that we may have in our spirit we can get rid of it okay and the refreshing of god with which he may cause the weary to rest that is coming from praying in the spirit okay so we can make time to pray uh, in tongues pray in the spirit and we will experience uh, that refreshing from god so that's again an advantage that we have now what are the other advantages we can praise and magnify god now if you uh, look at the book of acts uh, where uh, people were praying in tongues we are told that you know they were praying in tongues and they were magnifying god they were praying in tongues and speaking of the wonderful works of god so speaking in tongues is also to adore to worship and to praise god so we can uh, praise the lord in our own languages remember when we talked about the pattern for prayer we said okay we adore him we worship him we praise him we honor him now if i take some time to do that in the spirit there again what am i doing i'm giving praises and giving thanks to the lord i'm worshiping him i'm honoring him so adoring god blessing him can also be done in the spirit so spending time worshiping the lord in tongues is also a way of expressing you know sometimes i don't know if you've heard this but um i i have heard uh, like one of my uh, uh, the people that i know uh, he he uh, shared that 
he was unable to pray in tongues okay for whatever reason a uh, lot of people prayed for him for the baptism of the holy spirit but he never really was able to speak in tongues but in his family there was a crisis okay and uh, uh, when that crisis happened uh, when whenever he would sit for prayer he never would get the words to pray so he would pray 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 in his own language and his heart was so burdened that he didn't realize at some point he was actually praying in tongues because you know sometimes the spirit does not have the words to express what is in our spirit man and god has given us this language right to pray uh, like we don't know we don't know what words we are using but we are able to express our hearts in a in an unknown language maybe uh, our english is limited our uh, you know our uh, some of us african brothers over here what swahili or uh, you know luganda your languages uh, we have our languages tamil hindi malayalam every earthly language can be limited to express what is in our spirit but i remember uh, this this one testimony when he shared that in a time of crisis he was only able to express his heart through tongues and from that day he just started speaking in tongues similarly when it comes to our deep praises to god maybe sometimes we don't have the words you know we're worshiping the lord playing the guitar we're singing unto the lord we want to say thanks but there's no human language to hold that uh, expression but maybe you just begin to sing in tongues right but what's happening you're magnifying god you're praising god you're speaking of the wonderful works of god so praying in tongues can also help us release as much as our burdens it can also help us release our thanksgiving and our worship to god so we can take time very often to sing in the spirit you know paul wrote about that right i i i pray in the spirit but i also sing in the spirit so you might want to rejoice and release those those words um in heavenly languages by the spirit and you are worshiping the lord okay then praying in the spirit also helps us receive the mysteries of god for our own lives and i think i shared this earlier with us you know sometimes when we pray in the spirit uh, we are praying beyond boundaries we are praying to strengthen ourselves our weaknesses are being overcome we um, uh, you know god's revelation is being granted to us but how do we know how do we know what god is saying you know we are praying in the perfect will of god now there is a passage in 1st corinthians 2 which is often quoted by believers no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him but in that passage if you go further down we read but god has revealed to us by the spirit so basically it means that the hidden things of god are actually revealed to the believer how by the holy spirit so even if i am praying in tongues which i don't understand i am speaking mysteries i am praying in the perfect will of god i can ask the holy spirit to impart the revelation of what i have prayed uh till now okay and a, a lot of people like if you ask and even i like i've kind of started practicing that um it's true like after you've prayed for some time and you just ask the holy spirit lord i didn't understand anything what i prayed but can you give me revelation is an impression in your spirit you know you spent time worshiping me just now or you you spent time this you know saying this and that sometime and for some of us who are uh, you know teaching preaching god's word and sometimes it happens like the other this week only uh, we have a call tomorrow and on that call uh, there is something to share so i was wondering lord should i share or should i get somebody else to share but if you put something in my spirit i will share and then i i just what i did is i prayed in i prayed in tongues for some time uh, and then i said okay lord you let me know like you you put it in my spirit you put a word in my spirit you will not believe it i i had finished praying and i think i just went to uh, keep something in my house from one room to the other and just when i'm going no i got i got the scripture okay this 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 
okay so i i have my message for tomorrow i just got that revelation because the holy spirit can give you the revelation of what you have prayed now it's a mystery it's in the will of god but it can also be revealed it can also be given to us so whatever we are praying for we can ask for uh, interpretation and holy spirit can give it to us he can also impart things into our spirit for example you know i just said you know what i need to talk god gave me that scripture he gave me those points in the same way maybe you are a worship leader and you're thinking okay worship set i have to lead worship lord what should i what songs should i lead with oh, you, you know you help me holy spirit you lead me and holy spirit can put it you can spend some time just pray in the spirit just pray in the spirit spend time worshiping the lord and the next thing you know god puts those songs clearly within your spirit right and you know okay wow i need to go with this one first then i do this one that one so we can receive revelation basically that's the point i'm making we can receive revelation uh, for what we have prayed uh in the spirit okay because it's the same holy spirit who can also reveal those mysteries to us and that is for our benefit and praying in the spirit usually helps stir up the gifts of god in us you know paul wrote to timothy and said stir up the gift of god in you okay uh so generally right generally when we are ministering the gifts of the holy spirit uh one of the good things to do is to just take some time praying in tongues why because it's sort of like you know it just stirs up everything in you and before you know it the other starts other gifts start flowing you're prophesying you're releasing a word of knowledge your you know you're you're moving uh, uh, by ministering all those things but one of the good ways to get into that is to pray in the spirit so you know uh, particularly for ministry particularly for ministry if you're going to share the word you're going to lead in worship you're going to uh, you know whatever it is you're going to do you're going to pray for someone maybe just quietly take little bit of time pray in the spirit because paul wrote to them to stir up the gifts of god within you so what are you doing you basically you know sometimes when we have a cup of uh, coffee what do we do you put some sugar and do you just leave it there the coffee will never turn sweet unless you stir it up right so you have to stir it up then it is ready and you can have the coffee the same way stirring up the gifts within us sometimes it takes a little bit of stirring up and we can do that by praying in the spirit right and particularly when it comes to ministry okay so these are all the benefits i have gone little fast i have touched only some key points i've shared you know few testimonies here and there but as i told you if you could spend some time reading that apc publication called wonderful benefits of speaking in tongues you are uh, bound to gain much more okay so at this point i'm going to pause and uh, if you have any questions any thoughts let's take that up for discussion so silence means there's lots of questions at least that that's what i feel okay thank you for the yeah yeah yes devya please please go ahead uh thank you thank you first nancy uh, actually this has yes, had sir. been my question like uh, i feel it has been covered uh, really well for me today uh, uh, yeah i had this question about how do i understand what i'm praying in the spirit um so can you uh, also give a reference you know to which i can um, go back to with that mm. yeah sh- sure divya sure so uh, you want a reference for uh, uh, like for- that truth Truth yeah, that like what you've prayed. Yeah, 
yeah the revelation of uh, you know what i have pray what i'm praying mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah okay okay so uh, it's the same passage divya which is in your notes first corinthians 2 okay. verses 7 through 16 okay okay there we uh, we learn it says but god so no i have seen and all that right so there are mysteries in god but the mm -hmm. continuation from there it says but god has revealed them to us through his spirit okay. for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual so basically i mean he's going on mm -hmm. and he's sharing that uh, ultimately he ends by saying but we have the mind of christ or in other words what god is thinking it can be revealed to us by the holy spirit mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah. Okay. yeah yeah thank you thank you yes sure, sure, sure. thank you yeah so i mean there there are more aspects to this we can also uh, ask god for the gift of interpretation to work yes. in us no? Okay. Yeah. So that also is available for us. So maybe I spend some time praying and then the next gift is operational in me and I exactly understand what I prayed just now. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, I would just encourage us to, um, you know, reap the benefits of whatever we have been discussing. Okay, it's only by practice, like when you have prayed uh, in the spirit, you understand the benefits of it. So uh, in my case, like I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was a child. Okay, I went for one um, huge crusade and the and the preacher there he was praying for people to be baptized so i saw like hundreds and thousands of people speaking in tongues all at the same time and i was just a child and i was open to you know all this and uh, he said okay you 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 pray you ask the whole uh, jesus to baptize you in the holy spirit open your mouth and start to speak and it was as simple as that i just opened my mouth and i was saying like new new languages but i didn't understand what it meant for many years, I think till I uh, joined college when I was part of a Bible study where they taught us what is the uh, what is the reason, you know, God has given us tongues. What is the meaning of praying in tongues? So there they encouraged us and said, like, you must spend time praying in tongues, uh, you know, that that will really benefit, that will strengthen your inner man and, and things like that. So from that time only I understood, oh, it's not something that you can put in the cupboard, close the cupboard. Oh, I have the gift of tongues, but you have to use it. OK. And uh, uh, from then on, it's a journey. We, we learn, oh, wow. So as I'm praying in the spirit, uh, God is helping me to pray even for the things that I don't understand. So sometimes, you know, I just take time, uh, sometimes just like an hour or more uh, and not even the human language pattern of prayer, but just tongues, just tongues, worship, pray, pray, pray in the tongues. And, you know, sometimes you can, what we were talking about Isaiah, right? Isaiah 28, the refreshing. You may have come in so weary before the Lord, but you experience that refreshing, you experience that strengthening, right? Uh, and God also gives you, he imparts uh, uh, revelation to you. Maybe as you're engaging in ministry, I told you, what should I speak, Lord? What should I say, Lord? What example should I give, Lord? It comes to you. It kind of just comes into your spirit by revelation. And then you can go ahead and minister that. So uh, these are all things I, I think, uh, yeah, we hear what advantages are there, but as you experience it, right, you get really excited about uh, 
praying in the spirit so i just want to encourage all of you you know make it a part of your life an everyday part of your life and enjoy the many benefits of praying in the spirit okay all right so this class if there are no more questions i think we are good to uh, wrap up for now yeah sure so let's uh, let's pray and close i uh, would like to invite Yes, God. I like to invite uh, one of us to lead in prayer. How about somebody who has not led in prayer so far? Okay. Uh, I think Lubega. Lubega, are you uh, are you comfortable to to pray? Let's pray. Yes, let's pray. Father in heaven we thank you for this wonderful day and we also thank you for the wonderful lessons that we've had right from the pastor that, that taught us first and the madam that has also trained us now we thank you and God we pray for them to be blessed them and their families can let them be a blessing but again i come back to pray for us the students that have attended this trainings Lord let it do an addition to our career as we are trying to advance our knowledge wisdom and understanding of the almighty lord if is there is any of us who has got issues please lord with your holy spirit with the faith that we are learning with also the forms of prayer that we've learned please let no one go wanting There's a Bible phrase that says that I've lived in this world for long but I've never seen a saint lacking. So Lord, let any of us lack nothing. And in case there is any other thing please Lord send the Holy Spirit. I remember when Jesus Christ was going he said you won't be left as orphans. I will send a comforter. So Lord we call upon the comforter to help us as we're going to take ourselves through this day. we do pray and believe that everything is going to come to pass in the name of the almighty and everybody says amen 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 thank you thank you so much lubega that was a wonderful prayer yes okay 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 so uh, uh yes there is one a uh, comment here by brother avdesh uh, he says one of my friend when holy spirit comes on him only at that time he is speaking in tongues i was also like that but in slowly in many times i learned whenever face spirit of god so now when i'm uh, free and doing anything like reading uh, or riding a bike i speak in tongues am i doing good am i okay yes uh, brother avdesh so going back to that first passage no where we said uh, paul says i will i will pray uh, in the spirit i will pray with my understanding over there you have to note it says he says i will okay so i will means even though the spirit is helping us who has to pray i have to pray so the will of man is involved so it's not like you know holy spirit will come he will shake us up only then we can pray in the holy spirit no any time if i want to i will it is in my control i can pray so what you are saying right when you are riding a bike other times you you choose to pray in tongues that's that's correct because it is in your control in that sense the operation of the gift okay so you are correct you are doing it right okay i hope i, I answered it sure. yeah sure yeah. sure yeah. okay okay all right so thank you thank you for that question and thank you everyone god bless you have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you again next week god bless yes ma'am thank you thank you bye bye for now